Good morning, everyone. Thanks very much for joining us. I hope you can uh, hear me all right and also see Abby, um, as well as Abby support me with the demo. Um, we also have Maxine, um, who's behind the, the, the pot as our master controller, just so you know that there are some real professionals in the room should, in order to work with technology and should anything go wrong. On behalf of everyone in the LANCAT, thanks very much for your time. Um, uh, we, we appreciate it and, and your interest. Without further ado, uh, I'm going to share my screen. What we're here to, to, to demo to everyone is templates, which is our latest development on Analyzer. What today's demo isn't is uh, for beginners. Um, if So we're going to assume a certain amount of knowledge and We'll not do what we would normally do is go through the different functions. So this is a directory, this is a comparisons, this is due diligence. That's why it's a bit of a shorter one. If you are looking for a demo for beginners, there's two ways that you, that you can do that. One would be to uh, Google the Landcat website, find, find the Analyzer website, and inside there, there's a resources tab, which has got various how-to videos on it, which are aimed at getting started. There's also various um, insight within the insights and help tab, which will show you here in user help. Uh, there's some uh, starter stuff. Or alternatively, if you would like, if, if you're an advisor, or indeed if you're a provider and you'd like a one-to-one -one demo, we're always happy to do that through the lens of your own client proposition. So we can help you plug that into Analyzer <clears throat> in order to get the best out of it. <clears throat> so. Today, then, it is about templates, and there's two parts of Analyzer where templates can be applied. One is in the full due diligence module, and I've prepared one of those earlier, so you don't have to watch me do a whole due diligence. You'll, you'll, you'll get the, um, the information without having to sit through too much of that, and also in the comparisons module. Um, to begin with, what I will do is show you where the templates are and explain why we developed them. So templates in the Insights and Help tab, you can see what templates are available. We only have them for platforms just now because we've launched with platforms just to, as an initial launch and also because there's much more data points to sift through in platforms than there are NPS. However, we will be adding templates for NPS and in particular, central templates will be consumer duty, which is not far away. And we'll talk about that a little bit more at the end. Um, and, but these are the ones. And what you can do is by clicking on the template, see what data points are in the templates that you are going to be applying, should you wish to apply them. The reason we developed templates uh, one was just really to make using the software, you know, one of these making the software easier to use things. So the software does a little bit more of the heavy lifting for you. Um, and another one is so we could see what behavior and things that uh, clients were doing in Analyzer in terms of client segmentation and use some MI to match the data points of the most typically used um, uh, features and uh, pricing and business analysis for particular client templates. They're not intended to completely do your due diligence for you. They can, but as I'm about to show you, you can pick and mix between them and you can add and delete things from them. The main idea is that they give you a faster starting point and also allow you to access a kind of the, the Landcat insight and probably more importantly, the insight of what your peers are doing in the system. Um, finally, on the, the how and why, um, templates, they're just born, they're just a baby. We've got three in each of the platform uh, due diligence stages just now. We'll be adding more on a regular basis. We'd love to hear your feedback on templates that, that you would like to see, and we'll very happily add them for you, and we'll just really take it from there. So after that bit of explaining, I will just go in and show you them in action. I'll take a quick pause in case Abby's seen any questions coming through. Uh, no, not yet. We're good. We're good. So in that case, I here's my due diligence reports. 
One that I've prepared earlier with a template is this particular one, is the Lanka due diligence one for accumulation. We call it the long dog. It's completely fictional. There's no fear or favour to anyone um, in terms of providers, but they've got to choose, we've got to choose some to use as an example. So we have. Um, and starting then at new report, um, as, as you may or may not already know, depending on your experience of using Analyzer, once you've created over here in my firm, your client segmentation, which will momentarily go into and um, look at the segment that I'm going to apply to this particular due diligence exercise, which is accumulators, uh, clients broadly under 55, where um, we, we like to encourage them to use a client portal to get valuations and self-service and that kind of thing. Um, the type of investment solution that, that you're using, um, the investment proposition, the name of the investment proposition. The only reason I use sparrows is because lion cats and sparrows and sparrows and cats probably in real life would send each other a, a Christmas card. So that seemed, seemed like um, one to do. There's a box for your own investment philosophy as a firm and a new recently newly added box is target client definitions we added this because it's a good thing to do but particularly with consumer duty in mind because it's going to force advisors um, or compel advisors to to write down the target client definitions and um, for their respect their overall proposition or their respective uh, segmentation if you do it that way and the portfolios from the the sparrows uh, core factor MPS that we're using here that we deploy. So once we've updated that, I'm just back into the due diligence bit of it now. Um, and we'll stick with this now for the for, for, for the next uh, 10 minutes or so. So starting at new report, I've selected that segment. Everything from that segment, as you know, gets pulled through to your final report in the same way that everything that you assess and analyze within the due diligence module gets pulled through to your report as an audit trail. So it's a report builder as well as a, um, as a, as a research tool articulating the current situation. So fictionally, the long dog is using Quilter and Transact. Quilter for broadly um, less sophisticated clients who just need access to, to, to the MPS. Transact for higher portfolios and, and clients who might have more sophisticated investment needs. Um, if it's suitable, um, and that is, you type that in manually, it's there forevermore. So that's screen one. Screen two is where we get into deploying the templates. So in the, the templates button here, you can choose what ones of the three that are available are currently for feature screening. Because it's an accumulator segment, I've chosen the accumulators. By doing that, what that has then done is pre-populated my selected features with the most commonly selected features for accumulation segments. That doesn't mean to say for you, they're, they're all the ones that would be applicable to your own client segment um, or your own proposition. So you can take ones out, if should you wish to, just by clicking on, on the cross here, and you can add in additional of data points um, just simply by interrogating the directory. As, as you normally would. Um, so this is intended as a starting point just to get you going. And each segment has its own lovely little icon, as we call them. Because I've said Sparrows is my investment proposition, I've put that in and by clicking on a little star, I can make it of high importance. Um, so that's how you, you deploy the template. You can do more than one if you would like to. So I would also be able to add in um, sophisticated investment platforms here, but which I probably wouldn't do because of the ones that they're um, kind of client segment based just now. But <clears throat> for example, one we're about to add is the top 10 most selected features and that sort of thing. So you can see that this is a bit like, you know, on Amazon, here's stuff that, or music that you like that other people have bought before type of a thing. So by seeing the results, um, the only real change for templates on the results and um, returns page is the templates that you selected. So you can also click on that, which will open in another window so you can easily see again the features that are in that template. 
and what we see is a percentage match. So in this fictional exercise, fortunately, we've already, the, the due diligence, we've already done must have been pretty good because Transact and Procter already um, are among the highest percentage matches, could potentially have wise come into it, and Maltrees and AJ Bell and a few others look possibly interesting, um, but we're in, a, we're in probably quite a good place. Then it's a case of, as you would normally do, interrogating the results to see which features are and are not offered in addition to the percentage match. So I'll not do that in front of you because you know to do that yourself, but that's kind of how it works. And from that, it's a case of getting a comment into each box. So in this one, we're, as a, we're an independent IFA. We have no plans to join True Potential um, and use its investment proposition. So I've screened that one out. Similarly, um, We've had a look at Hubwise, but it's a bit weaker on client portal stuff. So for that reason, I've decided to screen Hubwise out in this fictional exercise. Transact and Quilter, both currently on panel, both, both show up pretty strongly um, as evidenced by Analyzer. So we continue to take them forward. <clears throat> Maltrees looks interesting. Um, and we're aware that Maltrees was principally born as an advisor's platform type solution, but now has a retail offering. Because it's got a high percentage match, it's worth taking forward. For AJ Bell, there's no compelling reasons to take it forward from a percentage match and, and features proposition. Although I did notice myself that for um, sophisticated investors, it probably does rival Transact in terms of access to more recent esoteric assets and, and stockbroker and that kind of thing. So what we'd like to do is assess it um, and get into price. Other than that, on this particular one, I can be relatively sort of, um, because my panel's in place, severe and screen out everyone else because I don't think it's worth looking at the remainder of the 23 or whatever platforms that would be uh, left and running. So we just put a comment in, um, no compelling reason to, to, to replace. A hack that I can offer you is for ones that you're screen, screening out for the same reason, you can simply copy and paste into the boxes. We know that the first time you do due diligence and analyze are filling out these boxes with a rationale, which is important for audit trail purposes, is takes the longest. <clears throat> with caveat that by saying when you rerun your due diligence, this is already there and it's very, very quick to rerun. And again, I'll touch on that at the end. But everyone else, we are screening out because there's no, no compelling reason. <clears throat> Analyze or auto-populate everyone with a less than 50% match comment, which would be a good reason to screen out a platform because if it can't meet even 50% of your proposition requirements, <clears throat> it's probably not going to meet your client needs. So... We do that part. We're then on to business analysis. And for this one, we've used scale and profit because the imaginary long dog um, investment committee <clears throat> is particularly interested in scale and profit. You don't have to be. Um, so this template pre-populates a minimum B minus for AKG, at least over 10 billion. I've left market share not relevant because market share turns that, and we're, all, we're also looking at the profitability for the platform business and the parent company. So it pre-populates that, but that doesn't mean to say that you can't change the template. So you could do that if you want to just use part of it. And uh, is particularly important, um, and so on and so forth. So what we then do is use the template to see the results. And we can see from that that AJ Bell, Quilter and Transact meet all of our requirements. So the box is ticked in light of our current platform proposition, but also AJ Bell, there's no reason to discount. Maltrees isn't in profit, so there's possibly a bit of a red flag there that my investment committee might not quite like. So I've recorded it in the comment that lack of profitability is worth looking at, but that doesn't mean to say that I'm not going to take it forward to have a look at cost. Um, and perhaps have a chat with Maltrees because it came back quite strongly, which would you know, be the right thing to do in this particular instance, just to make sure we're getting the right thing for our clients. So with those four in mind, we move forward on to price. <clears throat> and again, I'm choosing the accumulator 
um, template. And what that's done is apply these portfolio sizes, which are typically at the smaller end because accumulators broadly, um, you know, by definition are still accumulating their assets. That applies a particular percentage wrapper mix, which you again, as is a theme, you can change if that doesn't quite fit with your own typical wrapper mix for accumulators at a strategic level. And obviously I'm choosing the accumulation um, or pre-populating the accumulation uh, portfolio because there isn't going to be any uh, regular crystallization events that might cost something. Um, we can model an ad hoc fund switches um, and model portfolio costs if you run your own models. But because I'm using an MPS, I don't, I'm, not, I'm not going to do that. So taking that forward to the penultimate stage, we get on to price screening. And this then becomes a little bit interesting <clears throat> because AG Bell, <clears throat> I do, do pardon me, I'll just take a drink of water, is kind of particularly for the AG Bell SIP core proposition and even the IRA it is, is a decent bit cheaper than the platforms that are currently on panel, something about 10 basis points in the order, and Maltrees is significantly cheaper. That I look at that and think, okay, well, that is a bit cheap, but we want to examine why it's that cheap. So let's speak to Maltrees about that. Um, for both Quilter, they're neither cheap nor expensive, but they've got proven compatibility. Um, you know, they're, they're well-priced platforms. Um, and they've, they've, they've proven to us as a fictional firm to be value for money for that because we're happy with them. And AJ Bell, there, you know, there is a genuine potential to save some clients um, some money um, subject to us having a further look at the, the usability and all that sort of thing. So once I've completed those comments, we're then on to almost the final stage, which we call shortlist stage. <clears throat> At that point, it's time to, to take a pause. And the way that the, um, the templates are built into that, so obviously we have our audit trail of the current situation, details of the client proposition that we're looking, that we're looking at. We now do have a short list and the reasons why each of those platforms is in a short list. A bit, the big audit trail of the business analysis is of, of all the business analysis that's been selected, you can click on that to see what it was and it will keep it there forevermore once you lock your report down. The same in terms of the features template for accumulators. If I was to click on that, it would bring up the list of them. You can still download the big, the big spreadsheet of everything, um, if every data point that you've put into your research and the same for the pricing comparison. Then very crucially, <clears throat> All the platforms that have been screened out, <coughs> frog in my throat, um, and the phase that they've been eliminated at. So we've got a comment for each one. We know that they've all been um, eliminated at the features bit stage and a comment for them for your audit trail. And we're now at the point where <coughs> it's a case of writing up the situation that we're at as we, as we normally do. The, the sort of templates part of it is in terms of due diligence is broadly over now, but I'll finish the, the due diligence process it seems like the right thing to do. So at this particular point, we're saying, OK, retain track, retain on panel, um, especially uh, suitable for more sophisticated investors. However, what I would say is subject, uh, I'm going to typo this because I'm doing a live demo of it, so I'll do it subject to Further analysis on the short list because others that I want to look at here. I'll save that comment. <clears throat> Quiller retain on panel again, subject to further analysis. Maltrees and AJ Bell, right? We're interested in them because Maltrees was particularly cheap and it was a reasonable proposition match, and AJ Bell was particularly cheap and it was a reasonable proposition match. What I forgot to mention is that I noticed that the Sparrows MPS range, which I'll go back and show you um, in the features results, <clears throat> in fact, isn't currently available on either AJ Bell or Maltrees. Um, so it's down here. 
So I put that in as a, a of high importance. And for both of those, there's a cross next to them. So that's something that I should have mentioned earlier, but that we want to consider. But what I would say is it's not a reason to discount because that doesn't mean to say if one was to approach either of those platforms and say, you've come through my due diligence, but you don't support my investment proposition, are you prepared to add it? The answer is highly likely to be yes. Um, so <clears throat> I would say, in my opinion, it's not worth screwing out for that reason. But in your opinion, it might be, particularly if you're happy with the, with the, 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 the platforms you're using. What you're doing through Analyzer is writing down your homework and evidence into the, the, the regulator and others in your firm or your compliance manager or indeed yourself that you've gone through a good, robust, um, defensible process and who it is that you're using. <clears throat> so before we finish off the due diligence, we've got the bit in here. You're reaching the end now. It's a good idea now to take a pause, leave this report as a, an incomplete report, pick up the phone to the BDM of Maltrees and AJ Bell, and speak to them and say, we've done a, we've done a desk-based research using the LANCAT. You're of interest to us for X, Y, Z reason. You've come through it pretty well. Can you show us a platform and can you discuss terms? And <clears throat> excuse me, Maltrees, but why are you so cheap? Is there, is there anything that I need to do that here? So provisionally, we're keeping transacting quilter on panel. <clears throat> Going away, let's now say we've come out of this gone back to the dashboard and fast forward to three weeks' time where we've had our meeting with AJ Bell and Maltries and we're going back in to complete the due diligence exercise. So what I'll do is go back into the exercise here. It'll stay as an incomplete report and it's a case of then typing up the findings. Um, so what, what in this fictional case, because we've had a look at AJ Bell, and actually, the platform looks really good. <clears throat> it does have all the ability to meet sophisticated investors and it is willing to add sparrows. So I'm going to be bold here and say replace transact as primary platform or more sophisticated investors. I'll go back and fix like I've probably made about three ten typos there. Um, save that down. Maltrees, what I've put in a comment there is usability doesn't quite look there yet. So even though it's cheap, we'll just retain it on the short list. Um, and that means transact does stay on panel because we've got clients on transact and we don't intend to migrate them, but it just means that AJ Bell gets added to the panel where the, the clients are suitable for it and are a bit more cost conscious because remember we could save 10 basis points, uh, particular portfolio sizes, um, AJ Bell gets added in. So at that point, I can set myself my reminder. Um, we like every six months, complete the report and lock it down. Whilst that's walking down, um, I'm going to uh, just take a pause and see if we have any questions. Uh, nothing, nothing's come up just now, but if I've saved anyone got any questions, just jump in at any time. Looks like we don't. So <clears throat> the, the final thing, <clears throat> again, not to do so much specifically with <clears throat> uh, templates, but in order to edit the report, and I always like to showcase how quick it is to rerun your due diligence once you've done it. And a lot of you guys may already have done this a few times, but by clicking on edit report once it's in complete reports, and it's now the, the spinning circle means it's re-interrogating the database to look at any changes that any platforms have made. And then the feeling the period between when you last did your due, due diligence and you're doing it again, it'll take me straight back into the report. And um, uh, all this, the information that I've put in is there. The templates and other and other requirements I've put in are, are in, in there. 
I like to be fancy and call it a bespoke algorithm because you know if you Google what an algorithm is, it kind of really is, and you can and you can rerun your due diligence, and and as long as nothing is you know what just changed in terms of your requirements or you haven't decided that one of the platforms you're using has just gone off a cliff in terms of service or whatever it might be, and essentially get an up to date report for your file within you know five to ten minutes of work. Um, so I've just kind of done that there even more quickly than you would do in real life because you would have a read of things. But once you're here, you can you can go down to your um, summary page and, and, and say that, you know, really to the market, no change required and complete the report. And once you complete that again, which you'll do again, what I'll do is lock it down and I'll show you, which is again, a thing I always like to show is, the full audit trail of all the reports you've done for your client proposition or this particular client segment, as it's just taken a minute or two to pin the data down. And in this view history button here, you, you, you've got every report that you've done. So there's a couple I've done on the 18th of January and ones that I've done back in uh, 2023. But if I click on that one, it'll take me into give me a download of the PDF of that report. So you've got a full audit trail of every, every bit of analysis you've done and everything that's changed as it's changed over the, the, the months and years. So that's the due diligence part. Finally, I'll show you how the templates work in comparisons. So for platform, uh, as you know, you have features comparisons and you have pricing comparisons. I've compared a couple earlier, and you know, it won't take me long to show you this because they work in exactly the same way. I prepared this one before. What one can do is you've now got a new field, <coughs> excuse me, to select templates. I could select an additional one. So I've now selected two. And there's lots of data points in there. With, with their different logos beside them. And I can add or remove uh, um, new data points. But that's a really big research list, so I'll take some out. But just to show you that you can do that, then in, a, in addition, you can choose add in any other um, aspects of the, the directory into your research. And then that takes you to the same uh, results screen that, that, you, that you're used to, other than it articulates that the template has been selected. And when you download the results in the spreadsheet, it works exactly the same now uh, into a spreadsheet, I should say rather. And similarly, and um, kind of finally for pricing, um, you can add in the templates that are there. Coaching retirement. Uh, by definition, on pricing, you can only use one because one, one bit of data might um, cancel out the other bit of data, but for features you can do multiple templates. So we've got them, them set up there. Um, and if I was to do a different one, sophisticated investors, so there's a different wrapper mix, higher portfolios, more likely to be in a model portfolio with switching and so on and so forth, and get the results as, as you would usually get them, um, tell you what template is and download them as you would usually download them. And of course, as you know, with comparisons, once you've created one, it lives there forever unless you delete it and you can add and remove data points from it and it, and it lives and breathes in front of you. So that's how you deploy the templates into comparisons. <clears throat> I mentioned that we would talk about uh, consumer duty. So we will have your back on consumer duty pretty soon to update where we are with it is we have got a, both for platforms and for MPS, we've got a, a working list of new questions to ask the providers. We're at the stage over the next couple of months of sort of collaborating with the providers in terms of making sure that the consumer duty, the additional data we ask them in relation to consumer duty is, is doable, that they're going to be able to answer the questions. You're bringing in things like SLAs, obviously um, value for money definitions. Interestingly, nobody's going to say they're not value for money. Um, uh, so, but they'll be interesting to read and value for money is very much through the eye of the beholder in terms of a due diligence perspective, because it's for your client proposition. 
Um, but we will add a, a pretty um, thorough consumer duty template into MPS and platforms in time for consumer duty going live. So you'll be able to tick a, a lot of your consumer duty boxes by using Analyzer and applying a consumer duty template. They won't just consist of um, new data points. They'll consist of a lot of the data points that are already in Analyzer that we've gone through the consumer duty regs and mean they're things that you have to tick. So one very quick example will be that when you do pricing comparisons and platforms, um, and you do, I'll just change this demo 18th of January one, because consumer duty is going to compel um, everyone to look at total cost. I clicked on features there, I didn't I? I meant to click on pricing. Um, the consumer duty template will, exact, for example, um, compel you to put in additional charges. So additional fees will be pre-populated as yes, and you'll be looking to put in the advisor fee and the kit fee, whatever it might be. So whether it's the same for all platforms or whether it differs, but we'd apply that same fee to all. So that will be our consumer duty thing because assessing total cost and the constituent parts will be mandated. So that's coming soon. We'll be in touch about it. Um, other than that, I'll, I will take another quick pause to see if we've got any new questions. Um, and I think, you know, if you don't, um, we're going to put some links up for you to be able to share this, which has already been done, I think. Is that right, Nabi? Uh, yeah, the, the links have been added into the chat. Um, Terry, the only one thing I was going to maybe see if we could have a look at the, the list of all the templates that we have. I think you may have shown it. I'm not sure if you did. Um, I think Insights and Help and in Templates here. And I may not have shown you this, but this is a list of templates that we have just now um, at the baby stage. And these will grow over the coming weeks and months. Um, the next one we're going to add in, I think I already mentioned, is the top 10 most important features, which would be oh, sorry, not most important. That's that's a completely wrong word to use. The top 10 most popular features uh, from, from their our data bank and analyzer. So um that that that's a fun one. Uh various others that we have in mind. And we would love to hear any feedback for ones that you would like us to build as well. Um we will build them as we go. Um, Terry, one, one thing just to, to add, I think maybe people might like to know is like why we why we've created these templates and where we've came up with the, what goes into them. I think you maybe start added in a little bit at the beginning, but maybe just you know on, on a bit a bit more on that would be good to hear. Yeah, absolutely. And yeah, that's a good point. So what one reason is is as I've mentioned, it's it's a thing to help make the software faster to use. Um, and easier to use, so getting the software to do more things for you, rather than starting from a completely blank page of hundreds of data points, the templates are there if you choose to help get you started. So that's one reason for, for, for doing them. Um, the second reason, or, or, or the, the, the construction of them, is that we realised that we were, we're seeing client segmentation being done. We're seeing lots of exercises have been something like um, I think 550 full due diligence exercises run through Analyzer in the past year. And we can see the data from that and we can see what, what data points and price structures that advisors and planners are using um, applied for particular needs. So we built the segmentation by, by assessing the data and, 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 and building them out of that. So are they, does that explain it, Abby, or is there any, anything else of it that I've yeah, no, that's exactly right. And obviously that you know, if, if there is any um templates that people would like or or it would be useful for them then to see, um, we'll take all the feedback um in regards to that. Definitely we're going to be adding lots and lots of them. So um definitely open to uh, feedback from the advisors and users. Yeah. From a UX perspective, we feel that with Analyzer just now, we're at a point where we're um the core functionality is all there. And we just did a big launch with MPS earlier in this year with a whole new product range. 
um, which was which was a big thing for us. Um, but we're now at a point development wise where we're looking to start polishing the edges a lot and make it even faster to use. We think it's pretty fast to use already. Um, we we we're happy with the UX and we do get some good feedback on it. Um, but that is a you know a, a, a one key path of development for us is making it even quicker and faster to use. Templates is one um, sort of example of that. Another one uh, that I can mention today that we know that we're going to do is pre-populate comments in the boxes to make that bit a bit faster. So I drop down the comments that you can put in and things of that nature. Um, we're discussing a, a, a little user help um, fun functionality. So a, a, a chat thing for people helping each other with, with hacks and stuff like that and so on and so forth. So that, that that's where we are just now in terms of taking the software forward and we'll be we'll continue to do developments every month with probably some sort of release of new functionality every month um, as well as keeping the data um, growing all the time and the, the providers represented growing all the time as well. Um, so that's the that, that's a kind of a wee a wee summary of the a kind of roadmap for 2023, um, as well as onboarding. We've got about another 20 to 30 MPS providers currently in the process of onboarding. We've got 30 on already. There's a lot of MPS providers, it turns out. So when the um, when consumer duty kicks in, we'll we'll expect to be whole of market if there's such a thing for MPS providers, because I've got a feeling that you know there'll be new ones coming to market pretty regularly. So it's a fast developing space, but what's innovation going on? A very interesting space uh, where we're finding out and lots of differentiation. So um, that that will be a big thing for us this year is getting them all on and uh, helping you guys figure out the differences between them all. And I think we're at we've got five minutes left, but I said it might take half an hour at forty five. I think I've talked quite a lot now. My voice. Definite box definitely thinks I have. Um, so what I'll do is I'll stop sharing the screen now so I can actually see everything. And Terry, it might be we've got like a couple of minutes, it might be good if anyone's got any, you know, any comments, they can come back and unmute themselves if they want. We can get any feedback um, straight off the cuff just while we've got a couple of minutes left. If you're happy to very happy to do that. People yeah. People can unmute themselves if they have any feedback or even just pop it in the, the chat if, if if you have any initial. Feedback because it's our kind of first time chatting to advisors about it, um, so it's, it's any feedback is all you know welcome. Yeah, if if if, if anyone is uh, either brave enough or daft enough to unmute themselves and ask a question, then 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 go for it, guys. Um, and if yeah, not, we've got a we've got a question from Jeff. Um, what do you think your system does better than say de facto? Everything. <laughs> um, I think. The fact from a platform perspective, because we, we specialize in platforms and MPS, we we do much more thorough defensible due diligence where de facto is covers lots of different product areas, but at a higher level. Um, and a, a key difference between us and de facto, well, two key differences. One is the subjective element and building up the comments as we go through the due diligence. So you've got objective and subjective reasons for for getting a properly defensible and you know decision that you can represent to whoever it might be, the regulator or so on, or, or colleagues, um, or, or indeed clients, um, and also the, the depth of detail we, we go into and the report, the a, a report is much more detailed and it's than the de facto one. So that's not to decry de facto in any way, but it does more basic due diligence and the pricing. The other thing that's better than de facto is it's also cheaper. It costs 25 a month, uh, plus the tax for access to everything, including the platform and uh, MPS modules and anything else that we develop in the future. If we add new modules, we uh, product modules, we won't charge more for them. It's not to say we can promise never to put the price up uh, in terms of inflation. Uh, that's always possible because it's a fixed price product, but that is a pricing and uh, we think that also comes with, it doesn't just come with Analyzer, you get all the report outputs in the Insights and Help tab as well as our 
quarterly advisor briefing report and our full state of the platform nation report, uh, which used to cost what Analyzer costs on its own before it, before Analyzer was born. Um, and hopefully, Jeff, I did cover the future developments that we're planning when I was talking about the roadmap there. Um, there there's lots of lot, lots of little things added more. Uh, adding providers. One other thing that I can mention in terms of future developments will be, our, the, the, it will be quite a big one that we will do this year, is we'll be adding in a, a per client option. So you can put clients through an, a client module. So you can add a client to a platform or MPS proposition by putting in the client details and doing on all of the analysis. Um, and another thing that we do much better than de facto or anyone else, of course, is price and analysis because we have bespoke pricing. So you can reflect your special pricing deals yourself. You can build them into Analyzer and you can get 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 right down to the detail of what your clients are actually paying. You're not just getting an off-the-shelf description of pricing, which um, actually isn't worth the paper it's written on if because if you're looking at standard pricing, um, it, most firms have at least one special deal um, and if you don't, that's fine. But if you do, it's really not fine. You, you, you need to reflect what your clients will actually be paying uh, when you're comparing them to the rest of the market. So um, that's one thing. There's probably a, a lot more things I could mention, but I'll stop there. Because um, we like the facto. We do, we do not, nothing against the facto um, for, for what it does. I think that's it. I don't think we've got any more any more comments. But like I say, if anyone does drop us an email or um, drop um, us a message in the when you're on analyzers, get in touch button. Um, but yeah, 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 yeah. Thank you very much for your time, everyone. Uh, hope to uh, see some of the names there. We'll see. I know I'll be speaking to some of you in the future anyway. So uh, good to see you and uh, enjoy the rest of your day. Thanks again. Okay.